Coming up on City View, Water for Austin, another major milestone in the build out of Water Treatment Plant 4. National Night Out, how you can take a stand against crime. And school supplies, city employees donate backpacks to needy students. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Leslie Sopko. Those stories and more, but first our top story. The City of Austin Parks and Recreation Department is hosting a series of public meetings to help identify needs and priorities for Austin's pools, splash pads, and aquatic programs, such as lifeguard training and swim lessons. Community members have been providing input on what facilities they attend and what programs they participate in, and what they like and don't like about those facilities and programs. They were also asked to share ideas on how the aquatics program should look in 20 years and how we as a community should get there. Uh, last two days we, we've heard information about people wanting additional shade. We've heard um, um, a lot of input about having longer seasons and um, input about um, uh, recognizing that the, the neighborhood pools are the fabric of the community. These community meetings are part of a larger aquatic assessment which is being implemented in two phases. The first phase includes gathering community input and the second phase includes a thorough assessment of the physical condition of our public pools. Speaking of water, Water Treatment Plant 4 marks another successful milestone. The recent tunnel boring machine breakthrough at the Spicewood Springs shaft site marks the completion of all tunnel excavation for the massive project. Excavation started a year ago with an average production rate of 1,700 feet per month. The deepest point of the tunneling is 270 feet. The 10-foot plus diameter boring machine bit through the last chunks of earth after making the longest run of the five tunnels associated with this project. This tunnel will move treated water from the plant to the Jollyville Reservoir, where water is distributed throughout the entire system. Water Treatment Plant 4 is slated to be completed in 2014. And now it's time for our Austin City Council update. The Austin City Council approved beginning dates for the regular terms of council members, provided end dates for the terms of the sitting council members, and provided a method for staggering the terms of council members elected from future districts. This amendment would apply to council members elected in the city's general election on November 4, 2014, and later include subsequent runoff elections if any occur. Council approved a resolution to create a permanent music venue assistance program. The program would assist qualifying music venues with implementing sound mitigation devices and technologies that would improve the acoustic environment at the venue and reduce sound levels affecting nearby residents. Council approved a resolution that would exempt ramps for the disabled from setback requirements. The resolution also asked the city manager to review and make recommendations for reducing or eliminating fees and establishing an expedited review process for accessibility ramps. The resolution also included direction to consider reducing or eliminating fees for nonprofit organizations that build ramps at existing single family and duplex residential dwelling units that use 100% volunteer teams, as well as building the ramps at no cost to the recipients. Council approved a resolution adopting a set of criteria for creating a list of proposed public or nonprofit sites for Google Fiber Broadband Internet Service. Council gathered feedback on a proposed process and criteria for the community connections site selections from public and nonprofit organizations at well attended meetings in August. Google has agreed to provide broadband internet services through the fiber network free of charge until 2023 to City Hall, the new Central Library, and up to 100 sites. They will be primarily public or nonprofit that provide access and services directly to Austinites through what's being called the Community Connections Program. And Council approved a resolution that would support Houston Tillotson's University's initiative of creating a wellness center in East Austin. Houston Tillotson University proposes the creation of a community health and wellness center, a campus and community-based health care center that will provide physical health care services to students and the East Austin community. The use of Houston Tillotson's location for the community wellness center would enhance and expand the provision and services in the East Austin community. The wellness center will offer primary health care and will specialize in areas of need for underserved people. In all, Council considered 126 items at its August 22nd meeting. Its next regularly scheduled meeting is August 29th. For City View, I'm Larry Schooler. The City of Austin is celebrating the 30th anniversary of National Night Out and is once again urging Austin residents to take a stand against crime by hosting a neighborhood block party. 
This is a time to get to know your neighbors, meet members of your local law enforcement, and let criminals know that crime and drugs are not tolerated in your neighborhood. We look forward to October 1st this year as we did last, the 30th anniversary of National Night Out. This is a great opportunity for our residents, neighborhoods to come out and show those that would otherwise commit crime in their neighborhoods that they need to look elsewhere because they are a neighborhood that cares, they are a neighborhood that looks out for each other, and they are a neighborhood where they do not want crime to occur. So again, this is... National Night Out will be held the first Tuesday of October. To register a block party with the City of Austin, please contact Rosie Salinas at 512-974-4900 or visit austintexas.gov slash NNO. And in other news, City of Austin employees are helping nearly 1,000 local students ease into the new school year by providing much-needed school supplies and volunteering as mentors and tutors in the classroom. As part of the city's annual Build a Backpack project, students from various Austin Independent School District schools came to City Hall to pick out their backpacks for the upcoming school year. The annual school supplies drive assists students who are receiving free and reduced price lunches and whose families often struggle to provide the necessary supplies. This is going to be a wonderful thing for our kids as they begin their first day of school already building confidence, being, feeling successful because they are ready to learn. And so that is a big plus for our students. And also I just wanted to say um, as a parent myself, um, that burden that sometimes our parents and our families and our community have for setting that expectation for our kids. They're not going to have to worry. Their kids are going to be successful because they want them to be successful, successful and they're going to be prepared. In addition to donating supplies, more than 300 City of Austin employees volunteer at AISD schools as classroom mentors and tutors. According to AISD representatives, there are thousands of children in Austin who need this type of educational assistance. Research from the National Association of Partners in Education shows mentored or tutored students are 46% less likely to get into drugs, 59% improve their grades, and 73% raise their personal goals. That's all for this edition of City View. I'm your host, Leslie Sopko. Our next episode premieres Friday, September 13th. Thanks for watching.